If you've ever wondered how to do a deviation report with the Hilti Total Station, this is going to go through some of your options. If you find that you've tried to do it and there's been some software frustrations that you might have had, I'm going to go through some of that. Much of the software probably will be fixed in the near future, but I might as well address it anyway. So I hope this video helps you know how to measure existing points, process the deviation, look at it on the computer, and then get a nice report so that you can actually do something with that data. Let me know what you think in the comments. This first method I'm going to show you is really only if you have Profus Layout Office with Hilti. I will get into others in a moment. I'm going to open this deviation report job that I have. I'm going to say check and you're going to see in here that I have 252 layout points when it was created and my drawing as normal. Now I only called it deviation report because it helps me remember this project. You do not have to call your project deviation report in order to do this. Now what I did in the field already, let me go to my draw tab, is I staked a bunch of my points. You can see that I have a lot of more green. I already laid out many of these points, but you can see in here, they're all the ones that I laid out are green. There's some black ones remaining. Now that data is saved onto my controller somewhere. But when I export it, if I want to get that data, I have to export this file as a project file. Now, I already know what you're thinking is, well, why do I have to export it as a project file if clearly all these points have been staked and the data is already in there? Well, right now the software doesn't save those as points that you can export simply as a CSV file. I'll show you what they look like when you get to the Provost Layout Office software. But right now, the only way to export this to get the data into Provis Layout Office software is to export it as a project. So you'll see what I mean, and you'll also see later in the video of ways that you can work around that issue if you don't have Provis Layout Office as well. And like I said, hopefully at one point, this will change where you can easily export your staked data as CSV files or TXT files. But until then, I just want to make sure I show you this video, but I'm confident that that will happen someday in the future hopefully as soon as possible. So step one is once you're finished your project and staking your data, you have to go to your project. Here it is. And you want to export it. And I'll go ahead and export this project to my USB drive. And it's now exported. So now what I need to do is take that fi file and put it into my Profus layout office. This method, again, is only how you would do this if you had Profus Layout Office software. So now that I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and move over to opening and importing a project. You can see it loaded all of my points. Now, remember when I told you that the staked points was saved in here? Let me show you. Let me zoom in. So I have my point, LP135, and my staked point, 135. You can see the deviation right there. So the points were there the whole time, but you couldn't see them until you exported them. That's just the way the software works right now. Now, what I can now do is I can go to my reporting, create report, deviation report, continue. It's going to pull up all my points on the left side and all my measured points on the right side. And I can even say disregard any point that I didn't measure and just say I only want to export my measured points. So it's only going to keep the measured points and the staked points. You can see how they line up according to the name. LP3, LP3, 157, 157. And I'm going to go ahead and export this into Excel. And you can see that it has your name of your points on the left side with their design location, the state's location, eastern, north, height, and then it shows their deviation up here on the right side. So what's nice about this is that you have all the information you need and what it does is it color codes this to match the tolerance that you had set. So for me it looks like a quarter inch, anything above a quarter of a, a quarter of an inch or higher it's going to turn red. You might notice that my heights have looked like they have really bad deviation but that's just because they were designed to be zero and when I measured them I had measured to a benchmark so it was also measuring where all the points were in relation to the benchmark height but obviously I know that I can disregard the 
the deviation of the heights and just focus in on the easting and the and the northern deviations when I'm looking at the points that are on or off according to my report. But of course there's people out there that actually do care about their height values and this in my case is just an exception. I don't care about the height in this report but I'm sure other people will. Now there is a slight software glitch in here when you export it a certain way and I just want to show it to you real quick so bear with me as I just show this really quick to you. So I'm going to go ahead and press continue again as if I'm doing this for the first time. I'm going to leave this only measured points button turned off and let's see how it comes up a little bit differently. So let's come into here and you'll see on the left that you have all of your points, your stake points, and some deviation. But long story short, some of the columns are off. You can go ahead and pause the video and see how this is off. The calculations are all correct but the headings are wrong and the uh, for some reason it's only highlighting two values for me on the column over columns over here so take a take a pause look at this see how it's different but this is why I always prefer when I do a deviation report if I want to get it to work I make sure that I have only measure points selected because that has better output data of what I'm trying to see. Now let's say that you wanted to do this a little further. What you can do is you can come in here and you can you can see on your table view that you have all these measured points in here. Right, they're saved as actual points. You can actually go ahead and export all of these points. And I'm going to go ahead and include my measured points because you can see they're not included yet. But I can go ahead and say include measured points. They're all there. I can go ahead and export this and it pulls up the point list with the actual decimal values. So if you want to kind of create your own deviation report, what you can do is you can export these values. You can see if I scroll through here, let me go to the bottom. You can see I have my stake points and it's all decimal feet. I export it as decimal feet. You can see up here. So what I can do is I can take these values now and I can create my own Excel document to run my own deviation report according to my pleasure and my however I want to organize it. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an Excel document that I've created. On the left side, I just simply pasted the points. You can see they're still in decimal format. LP1, LP2, LP3, LP4. And I also pasted my stake points. And over here, let me bring this down so you can see my formulas. Over here, I've just made a formula where it's basically subtracting the values, multiplying that value by 12 because I know that I want to see things in feet. And I know that uh, this is going to be in decimal format, so I've also formatted this cell to be in a fraction. So I can see it all, all the way to a sixteenth. Okay. So that's how I've done my Excel document, but the only reason I'm showing you this is because you can export your own values in decimal format and compare them to the staked values in decimal format and then make your own Excel formula to do your own to do your own files if you want to. I think this is very useful to know and then I can come in here and highlight these cells. I can go ahead and give it conditional formatting and I can say things such as Okay, so anything that's 0.5 or greater down here, or one half inch or greater down here, I'm gonna have to turn red. And you can see right there is the uh, only one that's higher than a half inch. Then I'll go ahead and do it one more time for less than or equal to negative 0 0.5 format. I'll make these ones purple. And there you have it. Okay, so I just am basically creating my own conditional formatting to quickly find my own points. And so there I can go and say, okay, I can disregard these and maybe I'll delete the entire row. So I'm slowly but surely only looking at data that I, I want to look at that have as a bad deviation. So I hope that's helpful. Now I want to show you how you would do this if you did not have Profus 
layout office. Because if you don't have Profus Layout Office, you're not able to get the exported data of your stake points. At least as of right now, you can't. Hopefully, again, this will change. But I need to show this now because there is a workaround. So the other way around is that instead of staking your data, what you can do instead is go into draw, sorry, go into your applications. And when you're laying out, instead of using the layout tab, simply use your measure and record tab. And I'm going to show you what this looks like on another drawing that I have, on this demo drawing. So let's say I have these layout points and I want to do some measure, I want to do an as-built or a deviation report on them. I'm going to instead go into measure and record and all I need to make sure I do is that I'm going to make sure that in this tab over here as I work, I'm going to make sure that this name correlates to the name of the points I'm measuring so that I don't get confused of what points go with what. So I'm going to do a couple points and you'll see what I mean. So for the next minute, you're going to watch me walk around my miniature job site here and I'm just changing the name of the point I'm measuring to correlate with the name of the layout point. So here's layout point 9 and I went ahead and I named it measure point 9. Measured it and then once that's finished measuring I walk on to the next point. I'm going to make sure I call it the name correlating to the point it is which is LP1 and MP1 and as I'm measuring you can see these little square boxes lining up next to these points. So I'm going to the next one it's already called MP2 so I'll go ahead and measure MP2 because it correlates with LP2. Those little boxes are saving each time as I go this one's called MP5 because it's LP5 and let's go ahead and put this in the report. Okay, so now you saw that I did some measured points and you can see over here they're saved as measured points but they're basically my as-built. So if I scroll through here, I have my LPs and my MPs, my measured points and you see the 1, 2, 5, 9 and they correlate with the same. I know they coordinate with these LPs up here. Now these LPs aren't turning green but I definitely know that down here I have my measured points or my as-built points. And so now what can I do? Well, I can go ahead and export my layout points and my measured points. Okay, and I just have to remember my, my units as you've done before. Well, I'll select all. I'll say check. And now, if I come over here to my computer, I will go ahead and open my CSV file. And here's all my points, LP1 through 8, 9. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'll paste it. I'll paste it in here. Now I'll go ahead and copy my MP1259. Paste it in here. And I just line them up with their appropriate points and you can see the deviation on the right. And the last thing I'll suggest is just make sure you remember the units you just you decide to export your points as. For me you can see that I chose feet and so my formula over there I wanted to see things all the way to a sixteenth of what I know to be an inch. For others you might just like to keep it in decimal format if you like to see things in decimal feet or millimeters or meters. So make this work for you. Just like I said, it is very important that you remember the units that you export things as so you can interpret the deviations correctly. So that's how easy it is and I hope that helps with deviation reporting. But just to remind you the easiest way, if you have if you have Profus Layout Office, come into your project, export your progress project and put it right into Profus Layout Office and run a deviation report. Second method that you have is to measure and record your points in the field manually, export that point cloud and put it into your own Excel document. So good luck and as always please ask questions in the comments. Thank you.